and a very warm welcome to the Insider Essay, your guide to living better. Join us today as we open up to the extraordinary with the village of Gabaza, producing a queen for all the people in New Miss South Africa, Ndavi Nukiri. Sculptor Drian Klaassen answers the question, what if we could see our thoughts? Wine entrepreneur and celebrity housewife Tato Monse slays her fear of heights. Discover the extraordinary art and foodie subculture around our local wine industry. And Pilani Bubu trades the safety of the corporate world for a life of a recording artist and a Sama winning music career. Reality TV star Tato arrived in South Africa from Lesotho in her late teens. She's always cherished the dream of having her own wine label and has studied both marketing and winemaking in order to achieve this. Now, to both her family and industry veterans like Eric Sass, she's a respected connoisseur. Very welcome at Wolvenhoek Farm. Thank you. I'm going to take you guys into the cellar. We're going to taste and blend babayeto. Right. And then afterwards we're going to the vineyard and we'll do some pruning. I'm super excited because I've only done harvesting. So I haven't done pruning, I haven't been hands on. So I would love to see what method do you have for us. Great, let's go. To stay grounded, Tato keeps her mom, Matsepe Monse, and bestie, Elaine Fleischmann, close. And she'd invited them and her family with on this excursion to find out more about winemaking. My friendship with Elaine actually happened two years ago. I met him at the event and immediately when I saw Elaine, I fell in love with him. So that's how we met and we forged a real relationship. So Elaine is the love of my life. We met at an art exhibition, randomly. Her and I just struck up a conversation and we just fell in love with each other and it's been best friends ever since. My mom, my nieces, they're the love of my life and now that I'm here and I've got this platform, I feel like the only people that I need that I know that they're authentic, they're real, they're genuine and they're raw and they will tell me how it is, it's my family. So it's so important to have your family surrounding you because they will tell you how it is. Tato having come from such humble beginnings from Nusutu, she's got a massive, massive family and she loves absolutely every single one of them, from her nieces to her brothers, her mother, everyone. She absolutely holds them nearest and dearest and she treats her friends just like her family, which is what I love about her. We are from Lesotho and she takes us all around Cape Town to be here since she's the one who brought us here. We've known Cape Town because of her. She's the diva of the family. Yeah. Auntie Tato, I don't know where to start. She's beautiful, but then she's so funny and crazy at the same time. She's a good person. Yeah, you can have fun being around her. Before tasting success, Miss Monse had to rewrite matric, fund her studies, then learn about wine. One thing that I'm picking up is the color already. It's sure. darker than the previous one. Because it was fermented in French oak barrels. What we did with this wine, after pressing, we put it straight into oak barrels. And you let the fermentation go in the oak barrel. This one, when it's finished, will you will taste it has been in barrels, mm. but it's not going to be overpowering, and that's what we aim for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Fiona here, she's going to be the next manager of the farm. She's now assistant manager, and we're not prepping her, and I can go to Europe and sell wines. Yeah. So it's so nice for me to bring the next generation of winemakers and I feel like we need more female black women that are getting into the wine industry because our wine are really divine. Women empowerment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> women in wine. Cheers to women in wine. During her studies at the University of Stellenbosch and the Cape Wine Academy, Tato initially mastered small-scale production. She has a very DIY, hands-on approach to the science and is always keen to learn more. 
We are pruning now our W11 block. What we will do is we will cut more away so that you have less grapes, but you get better grapes. You leave two buds on the shoot, and if there's two shoots, the elder one goes, and you leave the younger one. Mm. And what yeah. is very important is, you always need like a fist at least in between two shoots. Here a shoot, there a shoot. Not here a shoot and here a shoot. That's too close, then your, your crop gets too dense. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And if you have a too dense crop, you get diseases. Miss Munze has her own wine label, with the wines being made at the Orange River Cellar. A natural marketer with her own agency, her role on TV has seen sales boom. Shying away from a challenge is not in her DNA. Have you guys done this before? I never. Chima, I've time. never. I've jumped out of a plane, but I've never done. Have I've you never jumped run out of starts. the plane? Uh, uh, yeah. Plane. Uh. yeah, I've done yeah. skydiving. Oh, okay, but I've okay, never okay, run skydiving. starts to my death. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it looks so scary. Yeah. <laughs> it's very important for us that the conditions are perfect uh, because we want to take the passengers on a non-forgettable experience and very safe environment. The passengers can uh, expect to see the beautiful views of Cape Town from a bird's eye perspective. Maybe a little too much perspective for fashion curator Kutazwa Ruxi Ekana. At first, Tato's rival on their reality TV show, but now her BFF. I've never paraglide before. It's my first time. But I am looking forward to it because sometimes we tend to run away from being scared. I mean, I don't want to say much, but I'm ready for it. <laughs> I've never, but I'm super excited. Seriously, this is something that I've been planning for such a long time. So right now I'm all about adrenaline. I'm all about adventure. So this is up in my alley. A slightly rocky start has never gotten in Tato's way before, and she was soon up where only eagles dare. Take off was a little bit bumpy, but when we came down, I could see sea point and lifting. And it is the best experience ever. It was like out of body experience and I'll do it again and again. And if they need a pilot, I'm here. <laughs> I know. It's quite scary. It needs someone who's bold, someone who is ready to, you know. Sure. Were well, you not scared though? Mm. <laughs> As Tato tells it, get on her wrong side and you can expect an atom bomb. But as a friend, she's in your corner for life. Tato is probably the most real, authentic and straight shooting friend that I know. She tells it like it is. She is always there to listen. She's just incredible. She's the warmest person I know. I love that she's fun. She is pretty, she is beautiful, and she takes care of me. It is Lekker Baby Seer, but behind the postcard, it's taken extraordinary lengths to get here. To an industry dominated by men where black women winemakers are amongst the rarest of the rare, Tato has brought a genius for marketing her brand by outrageous and fun reality TV. It's been an amazing day and I'm looking forward to spend times like this with all of you, mom, my nieces and my best friend and my gay husband and I love you babes, I love you mom, I love you kids! Love, love you, you too! Love you, <laughs> Coming up, all it takes is a morning drive to find that in South Africa, the extraordinary lies in every direction.
Sometimes it takes a visitor to our neck of the woods for us to remember what an extraordinary country we live in every day. So this week, Cappy Tech workmates Isona Ndongeni and Jordan Dunn decided to play tourists in their own town and chose a peach of a day to do it. Today we are going to be exploring the Western Cape and doing some extraordinary activities. I actually can't wait because the sun is out. For an amazing day in the wine, need some comfy shoes, great company, a cell phone to capture all your memories. And of course with Capitec Bank, you can make digital payments with your cell phone. So you don't even need your wallet, you can just scan to pay and off you go. Kifkom Metours, our bus alone is unique. It's one of the best, it's the only one you'll see on the road that looks like this. And we specialize in day tours, customized tours, specialized itineraries, good, great vibes, good food and good wines. For me, it's all about the experience. So I try and curate what I've done before and things that I've seen and things I know that I enjoy. So definitely people will enjoy it as well. To me, extraordinary means, you know, sharing meaningful moments. I'm actually hoping that we can create memories together, have a couple of laughs whilst going to different spots. Foreign film crews return year in, year out to shoot commercials in these valleys. And few scenes rival this fittingly named breakfast spot in the Yonkersuk. This is an amazing place, surrounded by lovely mountains. It's a lovely day to be outside and just enjoying nature. I've heard so much about the postcard and I think it truly is a hidden gem and the one thing that really stands out for me is the fact that it is so picture perfect when you arrive here. Now I understand why it's called the postcard. Well, the thing I love most about my job is that I don't work a day in my life because I'm out enjoying it. Out in the sun, out in the rain, out in the wind and I always say I never miss a sunny day. Seems like I made the right choice. The smoked trout and scrambled eggs was absolutely amazing. Everything was fresh and the ingredients was top tier. You savour live better moments like these even more when there's zero paperwork. I think Jordan has this one covered. It's a wallet free day that we decided to take. So all we brought was just our phones. The benefit of being a Capitec account holder is that you don't necessarily need to take your wallet. You can just have your phone pay digitally and off you go. It's as easy as simply logging into your Capitec app, selecting scan to pay, scanning the QR code and the payment's done. As tempting as it was to linger, word had come down the line that when in the Paradeiskloof, the Dylan Lewis Sculpture Garden is not to be missed. Local artist Hanle Hill makes a first class guide. The garden is extraordinary that it is a outdoor exhibition space showing the works of Dylan Lewis, our incredible world famous South African sculptor. The garden happened quite impromptu and unplanned in the year of 2009 when Dylan took a sabbatical time off sculpting. It was shortly after he had reached international acclaim at Christie's of London being the first live solo South African to have his own exhibition and auction at Christie's. Dylan spent some time on this property where we are standing today and with the help of an excavator, a digger loader, transitioned the land the way we see it here today. It's almost like the sculpture garden is this giant sculpture that Dylan's created with the help of the digger loader, transforming the land into these undulating hills, almost like a giant female sculpture lying on its side against the masculine backdrop of the mountain. After his triumph at Christie's, Dylan transitioned from wild animals into sculpting the human form. A hobby of mine is actually art. I don't know sculpture, but just showing the different types of forms, animal form and the human form was amazing for me. And for him to actually incorporate all his sculptures according to the landscape, which is the mountains, it was pure amazing. There was always this tension between wild and tame in Dylan's work, in his sculptures, in the garden. You transition between these spaces of wild and tame. In a beautiful space of indigenous fauna and flora, it's a beautiful example of Feinbos. Uh, and with the help of Francesca Watson and Fiona Pauri, the artist and the botanist has collaborated and created this magnificent sculpture garden that is open to the public from Tuesdays to Saturdays. And there's something for everyone to enjoy. 
Yes, there are our world-famous winelands, but even at estates renowned for their reds and whites, there are other adventures to transport you to another era. This is a horse and carriage experience. Um, it's something that you don't see anymore. And it's something very special to go out onto the beautiful wine estates, have a glass of wine on a carriage, and you actually feel like you're going back in time. Friendless is a very special farm. I've been friends of the owners for about 30 years, and they've always loved horses. And um, when I first mentioned about the horse and carriage, they were super keen for us to get going with it. The carriage horses that we have are bred for this. This is their job. They are Percheron stallions, and these horses were part of the Nisner forestry logging animals. We bought them, in fact, we bought all the livestock, all the mules, all the Percherons, all their breeding stock about five, six years ago. And um, this is our wonderful Oyan, and uh, yeah, he's a champion. This horse has got the best work ethic I've ever had on a horse. He's fantastic. He does weddings, he pulls with his partner, so I can put him single, double, I can ride him. He does commercials. Yeah, he's a very special guy. He's been on holiday for two years, so we're looking forward to getting back into the swing of things. Oh my gosh, for me, this experience was extraordinary. It was very thrilling, mostly when the horse was just going so super fast. It felt like I was actually in a Ferrari, but that was a four by four, off-road. <laughs> Different horsepower. <laughs> It was really amazing to visit a farm that was established in 1688 and to be transported around on a nice horse and carriage and to learn that this horse actually got a second life in transporting tourists around wine farms. It was actually truly amazing wow. to experience that. I want to say a huge thank you to our incredible tour guide from Keith Combi Tours. He gave us the vibes, he gave us the sounds. It was a Kif adventure, yeah. definitely. It's a great pleasure. You guys are most welcome back anytime. Yay! Cheers to an amazing, extraordinary day. Yeah, thank you. The easiest way to live better is just to step outside and begin to really live. Tell us what extraordinary wonders we're missing in your hometown and stand a chance to win a thousand rand. Simply reply to the competition post on the Insider SA social media platforms using hashtag Capitech Live Better. T's and C's apply and can be found on the Insider SA website. Just ahead, self-funded, managed and published Sama winner Pilani Bubu gives new meaning to backing yourself. Sponsored by Capitech. This week, we meet Pilani Bubu as she's preparing to perform at the biggest World Music Expo while wrapping the 10th season of her interior design show. Extraordinary for a woman once set on a corporate career. Hi, my name is Pilani Bubu. I'm a singer, songwriter, TV presenter, a poet, and fundamentally a storyteller. I was born in the trans guy of a family of five. I have a twin sister who looks just like me, identical, and three brothers. I started my formative years in school in the trans guy, um, and I left when I was 11. I came to boarding school in Johannesburg, so my history with Gauteng and Johannesburg started way back when I was young. I studied, of course the stuff that we all do, 12 years of ed higher education. Um, but I also did a BCom LLB and um, kind of went into the corporate world before I started my music career. With my upbringing, though there are many of us in my family, I feel one of the things that really influenced who I am and my sense of abundance and sort of search uh, and exploring the world and myself is because my parents always gave us all the opportunities that we needed. How my parents raised us really gave us the confidence, the courage, as well as the brevity to pursue a lot of what we've done. Me particularly, many careers, but more specifically, the courage to, to pursue my creative career and my music as well. Thoughts and words are Pilani's trade, so it pays to get them organized and centered. First thing every morning. 
The significance of me starting my morning routine with these rituals, I suppose, is all about finding my own flow. And I think that meditating and you know taking my time to drink my coffee and whether taking a walk is an important part of harnessing creative energy. What I do in kind of protecting myself and feeding into myself is making sure that what I give out as a creator is wholesome and and good and comes from a you know a healthy space and a pure place. And so when I meditate, I can move into this space where I can do one of three things. The first one is to download my ideas and start to create and like send ideas off. I make lists. <laughs> this is me sending ideas out into the world and I cross them out. Do you know what I mean? That is me guiding my way into the world so that nobody else kind of like pushes me to do what it is they need of me, but what I need of myself. I meditate also to get ready to face the world because the world can be a provocative place. But once you're grounded and you're centered, you're able to react from a good place. You're able to react with clearer thoughts and you're able to make sure that you keep good relationships. This space also can be quite personal for me as well. It's quite inspiring. I keep my family photos here. I keep awards here. There's a lily Louis Bronze here, a South African Music Award, just as a reminder of where I'm coming from, where I'm stepping from, and where I'd like to go. That SA Music Award was for her album on folklore, only made possible by leaving the security of a traditional job. So fundamentally, the thing that's really brought me back and pulled me into music and quitting my corporate job was always keeping this thread. I th in life, we like to hobbify some of our things that we love when we should actually use those things to drive what we want to do. And so what would I much rather be doing than working with people and singing with people, creating music with people? And my voice is my fundamental instrument now, looking back, you know, that's what I do. <laughs> is to tell stories and to really explore harmonies and layers that move people. It's the best way to really impact lives for me. This is music. This is love music. I come here to explore my ideas. This is a studio and Robin is my engineer, a trusted engineer and has become a friend over the last 10 years. Really, he creates an environment where I can build anything from scratch. I've worked with Polani for about a decade. Uh, I've worked on about three albums with her and a lot more singles. Polani normally comes in with a full laid out concept of what she wants and then we sit down and we'll break it down into, into smaller pieces and then build it up again. Having worked with her for so long, I know know how, what, what her drive is and how to get possibly the most out of that the moments when she's in studio, we, f we find where her strengths are and we can work towards those. In May this year, Miss Boo relaunched her folklore project in France, the rest of Europe and at home. The idea of that project is when I started kind of traveling and sharing my music around the world, people really looked at me as an African woman and wanted to understand where was I from and who are my people and what are we like? And so folklore was birthed and it became something bigger than me. So I involve other artists and people to come into a space to share of their folklore, whether it's artists from Lesotho, South Africa and different tribes of South Africa. There's so much of our folklore that we've got undocumented. And so what's upcoming that I'm working on is a festival that amalgamates this folklore fireside for adults, folklore for kids, and the musicality of all of that into a music concert to celebrate all our folklore on Heritage Day. Pilani is as much a visual communicator. She designs brands, graphic campaigns, interiors, and has a bold eye for fashion. My hair and makeup is generally inspired by whatever it is I'm wearing. I like to think of my life as a bit of a mood board, so the inspiration between my various looks are usually dreamt up based on the project that I'm working on and the theme of that project and how I can be literal but also subtle at the same time. And it's called cultural coding and semiotics. Certain things make you feel a certain way. White is purity, yellow is playful, pink is healing, and these are things that have meaning. The style is bold and powerful, and that's what Air IMCB is, create beautiful, powerful silhouettes. And that works well, especially in front of camera and on the stage. She usually comes here to find clothing uh, that suits her personality for the variety and multifaceted things she does on a daily basis. She has even performed here at Mall and Fashion House in the past, and that's why we collaborate so well. If at first you don't hear her distinctive vibrato voice, you will definitely see her coming. Such is the impression she makes. 
My look is generally very contemporary and fused. So in this space, you see a very contemporary silhouette inspired by something very avant-garde and dated. I do love to add a sense of where I come from. So adding a bit of beads and certain identity cues are very important. And so for me, crowns and my crown is part enlightenment, but also so much a part of my culture that, you know, declaring ourselves as kings and queens is to claim our identity and making sure that people stand up, listen, and then hear what it is we have to say. What is most exceptional is that Pilani's decade-long five-album musical career has been self-funded, self-managed, and self-published. When I quit my job, I met someone um, who told me that it takes 10 years to become an overnight success. And their lessons always stuck with me um, around keeping to your identity, your versatility, but remembering that it's not gonna be a quick journey to success. It's not gonna be quick fame, it's not gonna be all these things. It's gonna be perseverance, it's going to be hard work. And 10 years to become an overnight success makes you realize that all these things that we put in, they're not gonna happen overnight. You put them in, you stay consistent, you stay persistent. And then eventually something breaks and to the world it will look like it was overnight. But to you, you know what you put in. The way I'd like people to receive my music, it's really about the words. It's about how they move you. It's about how it resonates with you. It's about how I can express something that you aren't able to express. I like to call myself the indelible storyteller. I want to leave a mark an indelible mark in people's minds that shifts their consciousness, that drives them to action, that impacts their lives, that empowers them to change. Otherwise, then why sing? So that's how I want people to receive my music. Right after this, a sculpture like no other. Trian Klaassen answers the question of what it looks like when we think. Many traditional cultures have their young men and women go walk about to look within, find meaning and face who they are. Now, the extraordinary art of Drian Klaassen gives those inner thoughts a visual language. I'm Drian. I'm an artist, sculptor. I've been working with Richardson's for 12 years and this is my studio. I address mental health by using my work as a visual metaphor to touch on physical and ethereal subject matter like the neural pathways or the consciousness within the mind to bridge the gap between what happens inside my own uh, imagination or psyche and how I can portray that to the viewer or the buyer. Struggling at school, unable to qualify for university, Drian found 3D animation and with it, his passion. My unique style is defined by a simplification of visuals and shapes that I experience within my own mind. Uh, having dealt with mental health issues like depression and anxiety, my work was a means for me to create a roadmap for me to understand my own internal processes. And so all of the work that you see is a simplification in material to present that to the community at large. Having a space like this really affords me the opportunity to explore my medium and my work narratively as well as physically in a very calm and effective way to think about what impact I have on society and my community at large. Working through his questions on life via sculpture soon got expensive. So he had to justify his art by selling it. And he did. A piece like this is a really good example of bringing in very complex material processes into one shape. This piece is called SSRIs and it is a narrative symbolic gesture towards growing new sort of potential into old neural pathways and so this piece inside here is the neural network whereas these are the sort of new potential growths and nodes that allow you to re-establish a new relationship with old patterns of behaviour. 
For this particular piece, we use ceramics as the internal structure that show a, a warmth and a gentleness while using the copper growth crystal process to create these nodular crystal-like formations that show the growing potential. Seeing her son's promise, the love and nurturing of Drian's mother, Alette Kotzer, has proven the major influence in his unique work. A good example of one of the complexities of the process of manufacturing is my wooden sculptures that come from sculpting in a 3D design uh, software that then gets processed and printed out through uh, 3D printers that then gets carved and sanded down and finished in the studio, whether that be a glossy matte finish or even a wood stain finish. Uh, all of these things are being done inside of the studio and to our uh, finish and quality control. The ability to have control over this entire process really gives me a agency in being able to create the work in the particular way that I envision it, uh, rather than handing that process over, and so that's a really important step. Because I work with such clinical processes as well as quite uh, abrasive and uh, dirty processes, I've chosen to partition my studio space off into two distinct uh, sections. One being very fine work like the 3D printing, the crystal growing process which cannot have any contaminants that might destroy the machinery, and the other side of the manufacturing process which is quite wild, dusty and full of chemical processes. Working at the outer edge of his ability is where this artist is happiest. A place where logic ends and intuition takes over. This is where we do the copper plating solutions. This is where we grow the crystals. And so in this process, we have a electrical current that is passing through a very saturated water solution that has copper in it. We then have anodes and cathodes, which allows copper to pass through the water to deposit onto the surface. Now, these growths are defined by both the base shape and the current that's running through the actual object and plates this entire piece with copper and as you can see it's quite heavy and so quite a lot of copper is being deposited onto this base vessel. So here's an object that really shows the order that we can achieve both in the sense of how it uses natural uh, laws in the same way that nature grows plants, there's a certain amount of order in it, but also how difficult it is sometimes to see the underlying pattern in the same way that you look at a tree. There are patterns underlying the structure of nature, but one needs to distill it in order to extract those patterns. And so this is a really good example of that. Bringing different materials together is an understanding of constraints of each one of those material manufacturing processes and limitations. Something like the ceramics and the crystals is two opposite manufacturing processes that work quite well together. Something like the wood, however, would not be able to be introduced to something like crystal growing. Those two elements just simply don't fit. These physical representations of ideas stir much the same wonder as telescopic images that capture the birth of stars. When coming to my studio, you will find a large variety of different sculptures and different mediums, each provoking a different emotion and quality of engagement and asking questions that one can reflect on, uh, on the self and through the nature of consciousness and the mind. My three main categories of pieces that I appreciate the most is, for instance, the wooden Sticky Thoughts piece, which references the battle of the mind in regards to ideas within the conscious. The th second one is the calcified thought forms, which is an interaction of the copper with the wire that talks about the foundational thoughts being placed as a principle to grow from. The third one would be neuroplasticity, which is a visual exploration of what it would look like for the consciousness to be interacting with the neural pathways to create new means of actions within the physical world. Having such a wide variety of materials that I've worked with, I've been able to distill the essence of each material. And so once I've had a collaboration of the materials coming together, there is a complexity both in the material process, but also a complexity in the narrative that allows me to transcend the simple communication and to tell a more complex and more convoluted story. Seeing his work as a positive reflection of dealing with struggles with mental health, the artist insists that if you have a reason to live, you can surmount almost any obstacle. 
My ultimate aspiration is to create work that is beautiful. The main reason for this is that it allows me to bring the viewer's guard down before introducing them to the narrative structure underlying my work. And so that allows me to communicate something quite uh, difficult sometimes in a more relaxed and vulnerable state. Reflecting how far I've come, I'm really excited to know that this is only the start and that there is so much more to come now that the foundation of the narrative and the work is established. Having developed this visual language to navigate his own troubled waters, Drian Klaassen now wants his art and design to help others create their uniquely positive energy. Still to come in a dazzling night, the Miss South Africa Grand Finale shows itself more popular than ever. Sponsored by Capitec. This year's Miss South Africa Top 10 finalists are an extraordinary group of women and right for their time. We need champions of enterprise, justice, mental health and better nutrition and the class of 22 answer that call. Um, what I'm looking forward to the most tonight is firstly to see who is going to finally get crowned. I've been seeing the girls, they put in so much work and it's very commendable. It's not as easy as it looks on stage. I'm really looking forward to performing and to seeing their experience with people inside. It's been a long time since Miss SA has had like a proper full crowd and watching the show. So that's also very exciting. Tonight, jam packed, amazing performers. And I'm just excited to see the reception from the people. I'm excited to see who Miss is going to be. Judges included former public protector Tuli Madonsela and reigning Miss Universe Harnaz Sandhu of India. As being one of the judges, I think the process of being judging the top 10, it's, it's very tough. All of them have made it so difficult for us to choose the right winner. But I have to say that whoever wins tonight, Miss South Africa will have the great and deserving winner. And I can't wait to witness her journey at Miss Universe. I'm looking for a face of South Africa that inspires hope and self-reliance plus unity. What I'm looking for the most is a queen who understands the hour, the season, where the world is at, where South Africa is at. Somebody who will be authentic, but also have a world perspective on what humanity is facing. I'm looking for a smart, dynamic young woman who will honor the crowd. This year featured a reality TV series shown on the Miss South Africa app and executive produced by Rele Bochile Mabocha. What I'm looking forward to the most for tonight is, you know, the show that the team and I have put together. I'm so excited just for the country to see how we really want to grow Miss South Africa as a brand, but also for the top 10 finalists. Like, this is such an amazing and exciting night for them. My biggest advice for them would be, one, to enjoy, um, to prepare themselves for what happens after, because I think we forget that a lot, and to just really be the best that they can be in their yeah, and to not put pressures on themselves because they are human at the end of the day. They will make mistakes and I hope that they learn from those mistakes. For Miss SA 2021, Lalela Umswane, it's fulfilling to see the crown continue to inspire young women. I am super excited to be handing the crown over tonight. I'm a bit emotional, of course, because this has been an amazing opportunity. It's opened up so many doors, but I'm very excited for the next chapter. In the proud tradition of Miss South Africa's taking global honours, we're still celebrating Lalela being crowned Miss Supernatural. It was the first time a black lady has won, so I always said that this crown is not just about me, it's not about South Africa. It's about so many women around the world who have felt small, unheard, unseen, marginalised, just to show them that it can happen and your dreams are valid. Every early morning and late night's preparation has been worth it for Miss SA CEO Stephanie Wheel. Tonight is going to be bigger and better than any Miss South Africa you've ever seen before. We're going to see glitz, glam, and you know what the best part is? It's fully female run and only females on stage. Besides Luiso, female empowerment is what's all tonight about, and we can't wait to see who our Miss South Africa 2022 is.
Among the front runners, KZN's Ayanda Tabete. The anthem since we got here was just that nobody can be a better version of yourself than you can. And I think that if you can be that version of yourself, you're so much happier just going forward. There's not a hard job of rather trying to be somebody else. Authenticity is important for that reason. There's self-joy in that and everything else becomes easier. So yes, I've always had the dream. It was just a matter of when I wanted to do it. And so I knew that I wanted to do it before um, finishing my second degree. And I'm in top 10 now. So it was in my vision board. So I was journaling about it. I was praying about it. And I was just very intentional about preparing myself for this moment. Young groundbreakers from five different provinces put their best foot forward. An early favorite being startup entrepreneur Tamsin Jack. The reason I entered Miss South Africa is because, in my eyes, it is now the biggest leadership platform for young women in our country. And it opens doors to allow us to pursue our passions. I'm very passionate about empowering young women in South Africa to take up space, learn basic leadership skills, and also inspire them to pursue entrepreneurship. So I entered to show the young people in my community that listen, your voice belongs in reimagining South Africa because I'm doing it. I want to be a beacon of hope and I want to show them that if you set your mind to something, you can totally, totally achieve it. While she's an apparently extroverted model and performance student, Luyanda Zuma still shared her private battle to find a voice. So having to really suffer with self-acceptance solely came from what society was putting out there and I felt like I couldn't really conform to the beauty standards placed. So I think the man in which I really overcame it was just having to understand that everything starts with me and to build that confidence was really, really, really tough for me. But I stand here today also feeling like I've actually conquered a lot. Being the people's choice was incredibly humbling. Um, I come from a really small town. Um, I come from the village of Gavaza. And so just sitting here today, I think it's such a big thing for the people there. And so I think what we've truly learned coming from Limpopo is that when one person makes it, we all make it. We've truly understood the meaning of community and that um, when we stand together as a nation, we are so much stronger. And I hope that I can do my best to best represent them. Northwest kindergarten teacher Kiale Boha Nkashe returned from working in Asia when she made the top 30. I decided to enter Miss South Africa because it's a great platform for me to push forward my advocacy which is advocating for children who are in underserved communities and serving them through educational projects aiming at the arts, culture and heritage of South Africa. When you become a South Africa, you get so many opportunities and especially opportunities to serve. So I'm very passionate about mental health and more specifically the mental health of teenagers because teenagers are our future and if we want to grow economically, we need to invest in them and especially in their mental health. So this is my third time entering Miss South Africa. In 2020, I decided to take a step back and really refocus and go back to the drawing board. I worked on myself, I empowered myself, and this year I felt that it was the perfect year because I'm stronger, I have the knowledge, I have the strength, and I fully feel that I can take on this responsibility of being Miss South Africa. It is my second time entering, um, and it's because I believe that the Miss South Africa platform is totally worth it effort and that failure is only final when you stop trying. I wanted to give it my all because I truly believe that I have an impact to make in South Africa. This year's designers were inspired by South African mineral treasures for a wardrobe that had creative director Werner Vessels in awe. We have never had the type of looks on stage that we will showcase tonight. It is haute couture, it's avant-garde, it is fashion. It is something that I really always wanted to see and I, I, I'm hoping that pageantry goes in that direction, that it's not just all about glitzy dresses, but that it is something unique and it shows off South African talent to the best of its abilities. The inspiration for the Miss South Africa pageant for 2022 is South Africa's minerals, our biggest exports. Uh, we're looking at diamond, gold, platinum, charcoal, copper. 
I kind of see the woman that into this platform as rough diamonds. It doesn't mean that they aren't, but they are diamonds nonetheless. And then we put them in a pressurized environment and we make them into beautiful, beautiful exports of South Africa because the whole world will be watching. I was very inspired by minerals. So tonight for the first time, you won't see any color on the girls. So there will be a lot of color on stage, but there will be no color on the girls except for metallics. So, you know, the process to get the girls ready for tonight, which is the finale event, is really something that is unheard of. We've provided them a complete network of people and experts and sponsors to really get them ready from an emotional perspective, from a psychological perspective, from a physical perspective, from a beauty perspective. We've given them makeovers. We've truly transformed them into the best versions of themselves. So it's been a process and there's been a two month window between announcing our finalists and having a new Mrs. A. So it's quite a short window, but I really believe in the process and I believe in the power of the process to truly set this woman up for greatness. For me, the next Miss South Africa is what we all want, a relatable, empowered woman to strive and drive the messaging for all women across the nation, to make sure that she is the one that you all see reflected in, that every young girl sees her face on that stage and in every single thing that she does going forward. She will represent us so beautifully by being that woman, relatable, authentic, and a beautiful woman that is proudly South African. Five times a judge, this year Anele Mdota played host, seeing the field narrow down to the final duo, featuring Limpopo's Ndavi Nokiri and KZN's Ayanda Tabete. Your Miss South Africa 2022 is Ndavi Nokiri! Hi, my name is Ndavi Nukeri. I'm 23 years old and I am your Miss South Africa 2022. And sitting here, I can't believe I'm living my dream. It's an absolute dream come true and I'm so excited for the journey ahead. How I plan to use the Miss South Africa platform to really bridge the gap is through advocating for educational equality. I really want to work with different stakeholders such as educational institutions so that we can ensure that learners from the rural areas also have access to all the resources and the tools that they need to become successful members of society. The message that I have for the young girl in Limpopo is that it is possible. For me to be sitting here today coming from a village, it is a testament that truly all our dreams are valid regardless of where you come from. You can achieve anything that you set your mind to and that you should never count yourself out because of your background, never count yourself out because of your race, your gender or any sort of thing that you feel has ostracized you in the past. So I think it really is a message of hope and so if it is possible for me then it is definitely possible for her and she should not fear not doubt herself just step into it and you'll see your future unfold so beautifully educated women grow the wealth of a nation and in investment management consultant Ndavi we have the proof of why a well-educated child offers our country the best returns Join us again next week as dedication pays in epic proportions for South Africa's Will Lindley, who's gone from TikTok content creator to breakout star, filming music videos in the US and making waves far beyond. Get more of the Insider Essay online. Follow, connect, engage, and be inspired to live better with the Insider Essay. Watch the show Monday evenings at 6, repeat Saturday at 1 on S3.